in the previous nine investigations just about everything. So it'll be interesting to see uh, what uh, comes out of this. That is Representative Elijah Cummings talking about the Benghazi panel in where Hillary Clinton is going to testify. Karen Travers, ABC News correspondent, joins us. Good morning, Karen. Good morning. Very busy day on Capitol Hill today. Long hearing ahead for the Benghazi committee and for Hillary Clinton. How many times is this that she's going to be now testifying in front of a Benghazi committee? Right. This is, uh, I think, at least her third or fourth now. But this is the Select Committee on Benghazi. This is the committee that has spent the 17 months just focusing on the attack and what happened leading up to it and what can be done to prevent it from happening again. Over $4 million has been spent. The investigation has been going on longer than the Watergate investigation. And it all comes to a head today. This is the day that the committee has been wanting for some time. Hillary Clinton on the hot seat uh, facing questions from the seven Republicans and five Democrats. But, you know, McGraw, I think if you had asked me three weeks ago of what the tone would be, I would have said mm, fireworks and very aggressive. And this, I think the strategy has changed a little bit, though, for the Republicans. Kevin McCarthy's comments two weeks ago that suggested that this committee is responsible for Hillary Clinton's poll numbers dropping, the Democrats just pounced on that, saying, see, this is just a political witch hunt, like we've been saying all along. I think that's going to force the Republicans to shift their tone a little bit today, but maybe that will mean we're going to really get eight hours of diving into the issues and the politics will be left aside. Wasn't there another Republican who came out and said basically the same thing? There was, even a little bit stronger, too. But when you have somebody like Kevin McCarthy, who at that point, when he said those comments, he was running for House Speaker, you know, a very senior Republican saying it. And, you know, I think it also is backed up by some polling. Today, ABC News Washington Post poll found that 53 percent of Americans say the investigation is just a Republican effort to harm Hillary Clinton's reputation. Not good for Republicans going into today, but also, an equal number, 54%, say they disapprove of how Hillary Clinton has handled questions about the attack. So she's not looking great either coming into this. So I think that shows what a high-stakes day it is for both sides. Um, and we'll see how aggressive these questions get today. It'll I'll, be a very long day. <laughs> yeah, and she's going to be, uh, the way she answers the questions, and she's going to have to not lose her temper no matter how long or arduous the question is. Mm -hmm. But is there anything... Um, that might come out of this. Is there anything that we don't know that she hasn't answered that hasn't been already uncovered? Is there is there any actual news that might come out of right. these hearings? Well, you know, the one thing that since she's testified specifically on this attack and on this issue is of course the private email server and you know I expect questions will come up about that because Republicans say that the administration has slow walked the documents up to them that it's taken them begging to get information turned over and that they've been less than helpful on this that's when the whole private email server came to light in the first place I think, though, a month ago, there might have been more questions focused on that, and now the Republicans are going to try and keep it less about that and the politics and more on the issues. But certainly we'll see her have to address more questions, and it's different than when you're doing it at a press conference, but when you have partisans asking those questions. So we'll see. Karen Travers, ABC News correspondent. While we have you for another moment, Joe Biden, yeah. were, were people shocked that he decided not to run for president? I think the timing of it was surprising. First of all, there was no notice. It was just 15 minutes, the vice president's coming to the Rose Garden with the president. Everybody go. So it was quite a scramble. But then when you read the tea leaves, it was like, okay, he's doing this at the White House. He has gonna, he'll has gonna. have the president standing right next to him. There's no way he's running. You don't do it in that context. But I think what was remarkable, McGraw, was... What he delivered yesterday was the stump speech that we'll never hear Joe Biden give in Iowa or New Hampshire. And it's the bullet points that he'll never say at a presidential debate over the next couple of months. And he wanted to get that out there. He sent a very strong message to the Democratic Party and the Democratic contenders that these are the issues he would have focused on, and he wants them to focus on it as they take their fight to the Republicans over the general election. Really interesting stuff. Uh, that is Karen Travers, ABC News correspondent. Karen, great. Thanks for checking in. Thanks. Have a great day. 755, Big 550, KTRS, Boardwalk Hardwood.